Do you want to stay in the snorkel but don't want to pay upwards of $800? We'll check this one out. Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be installing something that I think I've needed for a while. That is a stainless steel snorkel. We've gone with the uh, powder coated black finish. Uh, it's a snorkel by Day One. If you haven't heard of them, they're a bit of a sister company to uh, Fabulous Fabrications. It's on the back of my shirt just here. And uh, they make beautiful snorkels. And this is their more affordable range that I was lucky enough to get sent out to me to whack on the big rig. But let's uh, figure out how to get all this bubble wrap off without scratching the snorkel. All right, now that we are undone and looking at this beauty, oh man, I'm so keen to get this thing on. But first, let's have a look what comes in the kit. So obviously you get the snorkel, you get a 90 degree silicon that actually brings it around into your airbox. Your two hose clamps to make that fit. For the Colorado, you have this straight piece that comes from the airbox to the snorkel um, that you just have to like screw and, and basically stick a flex on. You get a bit of pinch weld to go around your hole. You get a little, you know, it's like an O-ring. It's an O-ring that goes around the tip that when you're going over 90 kilometers an hour, they say that water can actually travel up and get sucked down the snorkel. So this is like a, an O-ring that just deflects the water pretty much. You put it up around the edge. When you're traveling at that speed, the water goes up the snorkel, hits this and sort of flings off instead of goes around into your air box. You also get the thing that everyone wants, a bloody sticker. Who doesn't want that? You get a full set of pretty detailed instructions on how to install this, all the gear that you need. Um, and there's a few photos and, and bits and pieces in there where you gotta put the holes, all that sort of stuff. So it's pretty in depth. This is probably something you can do on your own if you're a bit nervous about it, just go get a shop to do it. Um, but this is my first time. I've also got a mate Bailey coming around to help me out. Um, and this is, will be his first time as well. So I'm sure we can get it done. It also comes with the template, obviously. Uh, I'm happy this is just an elongated hole. It makes it a little bit easier for me to cut. And you basically just do a couple of measurements, line this up on a tape, draw a circle and cut away. All right, so as I was saying before, this is a budget line by Fabulous Fabrications called Day One. The reason being is that it is a non-seamless snorkel. So if you've done your research, most snorkels you'll find are a seamless snorkel. Means that you can't see any of the welds. It looks like one bent piece. This one is non-seamless, so you can see where the welds are. Now, don't let that scare you away because these things are impeccable. They are a beautiful weld. And to save yourself a few hundred dollars, I think that's a pretty good compromise. So I'll put their link down below, but it's just day one by fabulousfab.com.au. Go check them out, see what they've got for your car. A couple of different models of cars have different uh, entries, like short, long entry, stuff like that. Um, but you do get the option of powder coated black or stainless steel. So this exact snorkel I have here is a black powder coated snorkel for the RG1 Colorado. It is a four inch non-seamless snorkel. That's handcrafted in 316 stainless steel and it is also purge welded so that they can guarantee longevity and basically just have a really, really good finish on it. Now I wanna thank Day One for sending me out this snorkel. I'm so keen to get it on. It's been long overdue. I really need to stop going in bog holes with that one. But let's start reading this and get into installing it. There's uh, quite a few steps, but they are very detailed. So they tell you literally every little thing you need to do. And um, I guess the only way to start is to start at number one and get straight into it. Let's go have some fun. Right at step number one, tape up everything so you don't scratch anything. So we're gonna do this whole area. I'm gonna do all here as well. And then you do up the A-pillar and also inside where the riv nuts and stuff will go. I'm probably gonna maybe do the door and the bonnet anyway, just in case it's in the way. I don't wanna scratch the powder coat on that. And I also don't want to scratch the car, but more that. <laughs> Right, our next step is we have to remove the airbox. So I just took off the uh, airflow meter. I have loosened off this hose clamp just here because I personally I found it's just the best way to take it off rather than take that one off. Um, and then we just got to do three 13 mil bolts. So there's one down there and two over the back. All right, well, if you're doing this at home, that bolt under there is a bit of a pain. Uh, start with a ratchet and spanner and get it as long as you can, but then it sort of hits the underside of the uh, coolant holder there. So you have to get an open ender and just keep going. I was probably spending about 10 minutes just unscrewing that. The bolts are quite long, so you're gonna be sitting there for a bit with your hand underneath the uh, power steering line. But um, yeah, you'll get that out. All right, next step, we've got to take this snout off. There's just three Phillips head screws. So we're just gonna back them all the way out. All right, now that we've got the snout off and I've just given it a little bit of a clean up because it was quite muddy, we get our uh, stainless piece. We have to mark 
lost the tape measure, but we have to mark down. I've gone 35 mil and gave myself a line all the way around. There's a cutout on it. That goes into the snout where there's like a bit of a, a raised part. So you slip that in, line up your 35 mil line. Um, we're gonna run a bead of Sikaflex around on the inside and then just whack three screws. That'll hold it and, um, and basically let it set. But right now that we have sealed this up, so as you can see, I've done a nice beta seal of uh, sicker seal all the way around. I put three screws in just to hold it, and then we've gone seal all in there, or sicker flex, sorry, not sicker seal. So now that that's all on, we're gonna let that sit aside and dry. Next step, we're gonna remove the inner guard so that we can access the uh, old intake pipe and everything, and then we have to just remove the old intake pipe. But our next step, we have to remove this plastic piece here. So after you do a nut, a few nuts and stuff, you take this plastic bit right out is what we're gonna do. Uh, we have to lob that off at 100 mil from there, just cut it off square. And then up underneath the guard, there is a thread up the top, which is one of the nuts you just took off. That tab there, we basically just gotta lob it off. So from here back, we're just gonna cut that in a straight line and uh, get rid of that tab completely so it doesn't hit our snorkel. Right, now that piece is back under there, we get our template, so I just quickly cut that out. Um, just made sure it was all neat, and it's probably the scariest cutting I've ever done. We've got to mark down 85 mil on here, so we're going to come down from the top of the guard, so 85 mil, and then we just got to mark a straight line. Something like that. And then we just got to mark from the back of the guard up there, 615 mil, which is at that point there. And then we're just going to trace around and hope for the best. I don't know, we just remove our template after drawing it and <laughs> here comes the exciting part that everyone hates. So, moment of truth, we've marked it all out. We've now checked that there's nothing behind there. Um, I'm going to start by going in the middle with the air saw just to get the hang of it because this is the first time I've ever used one. And I'm starting on a small drill bit just so I don't walk heaps and a bit of a pilot bit. But I guess let's just see how we go. Well, no can turn back now. <laughs> Rightio, well our hole is cut and finished, I've just done a deburr around it and we've just given it a quick test fit with the pinch weld and the tape still on and it fits pretty nice. So we're going to pull the tape off all this guard now. Um, we might leave it up there just for a bit but around the uh, where the pinch weld's got to go we'll take off. I think the next step is to do the air box. So that will be first and then we'll, we'll get cracking on all that stuff. Alright, just to quickly jump in here, before you put the pinch weld on after you deburr it, all that sort of stuff. Make sure you give it a paint. I actually forgot to do it, so one day I am gonna have to take that off, but luckily this guard's a bit damaged anyway, so one day I probably will just redo the whole thing. So make sure you do paint it in between the deburring and the pinch weld. All right, back to it. Now that we've put the snout back on, Bailey's just doing the pinch weld, so you just run that around and snip it so that it's nice and, and I don't know, even, it looks like one big piece, don't leave any gaps. Uh, now we're up to the stage of putting this back in, so I'm going to go through the pain of putting that one screw back in, get it all back in uh, so the airbox is done. But yeah, so we've got our airbox in and finished. I put the airflow sensor back on, it's all bolted down, all finished up. The next step is you just got to put the silicon 90 on. So we put that on and you will just nip up the hose clamp that's on the uh, airbox side. Just nip it up slightly um, so we can still spin it and stuff when the snorkel's in there. Now that that 90 degree bend is on, we're gonna uh, put the snorkel in now and pretty much this is this is final. So you put it in, we mark up the top and put our nut sets in. The cooking sprayed up the end of it to help it slide in a bit better. But other than that, it's sweet. Yeah. Um, I'm starting to hook in a bit. Hook in, hook in. Pretty much you just do what you're going to do. I don't, I don't know what I'm doing. Okay. <laughs> I'm just 
trying to go off field. Are you in? Yeah, it's just slipped in there. Just open the door up. Yeah. Yeah, we're <coughs> bang on the spot here. Uh, With that vine? Yeah. Yeah, sweet, it's rolling here. Right on, now that all this section is in, I've nipped up the hose clamps underneath just to keep it in place. And now we've just got to drill our rivet nuts and stuff in here. So I've got one of these auto punches. I'm just going to punch a center to get my hole. And then we've got to drill them out to a nine and a half mil bit and put the, the nut sets in. All right, tape's coming off because we are done. So the nut sets went in, got out day one. You guys haven't seen that yet, but how good does that look up there? It's really clean, really nice. And that's a, uh, a three millimeter steel tip. So nice and strong, shouldn't really bend and stuff like that. And obviously powder coated. If I get on the right angle, you can see that weld just there. But like I was saying from back here, good luck trying to see that. How good does that look? Let's close up the car a little bit. That fits in there nicely. And there's us with a snorkel on. Oh, bloody oath, that looks good. Right, we just got to put the wheel arch in, put the bonnet down, all that sort of stuff, and then we'll try to pack up a little bit and show you guys what it actually looks like. Righto, snorkel's on. As you can see, it's looking amazing. We're gonna do first startup, so let's see, see what sort of suck we get from this thing. Nothing at the moment. Oh, you can feel it. Can you? Yeah. Oh yeah, wow. Accelerate a little bit. Doesn't sound that much any different. I can kind of hear it. Oh uh, yeah, you can it's hear always, it. It's always, it's always up. Oh yeah, I can hear that. You must really have to get into boost for it to work. Yeah. It'll probably work heaps more when I'm driving around. Oh, for sure. That's mad, look at that guys. I'm absolutely stoked. Thank you day one for this snorkel. I reckon it looks amazing. And like I said, try picking those seams. There's no chance. It's not until you're like right here and you know you get the right light that you can actually pick more focus. That you can actually see those seams. So they've done them that well and just they really take their time with them and make them look good. Righto guys, we've packed up everything um, and it's all looking great. Uh, already in love with this thing it's amazing I'm gonna talk to you guys tomorrow though because it is stinking hot it's about 34 degrees at the moment and I'm sweating like a pig so I'm just gonna go jump in the pool and deal with some with all the other footage tomorrow so I will see you guys in the morning see ya all right guys so 24 hours with this snorkel and I'm absolutely in love with it it is probably one of the just best looking mods I think you can do to a four-wheel drive uh, I'm stoked with how it turns out and how it looks on the car um, I think it's just a one so once you finish your install, the next steps is to give it a quick blow off with the air compressor and then give it a good wash just to just to get rid of any um, metal shavings or anything like that that can rust on your paint. After that, they recommend to get, hit it with a bit of a uh, liquid polish. So my go-to is Boss Gloss. I've had it since I had the Commodore really. I've always used this stuff and it's it's just great product and it, it's super easy. I don't, I'm not a detailer, I suck at cleaning cars. So this is just a really easy way to make it spruce up and give it a good shine to it. So you just spray it on, give it a give it a hit with a um, good clean microfiber towel. Then once that is done, there are aftercare instructions in the manual once you guys get your own, but basically it's just give it a polish every couple of months and just keep it up to scratch with the boss gloss and washing it every now and then. Make sure you don't let bird poo or mud or anything like that sit on it for too long. But other than that, it's, uh, it's really simple and I can't wait to take it out on the tracks and, and test it out underwater. So my review after driving it around for a day, um, I would definitely say that it's not that bad sound wise. Um, I always heard that you can't drive with your windows down, you're going to hear it and it's just going to be annoying. Well, to be honest, it's not that bad. I put my windows up and the radio on, you cannot hear it at all. Um, and when my windows are down, I'm, I'm someone who pumps the radio anyway. So I can't hear it over my, my tires, my radio and the exhaust that dumps right underneath me. So basically I can't hear it at all. When you're cruising along, I found that Cruising acceleration is when it's at its loudest, so low boost I'm guessing. Um, 
and you can you can hear that roar when you're up in boost and you you know you're trying to give it some then it's quiet as overall installation process was actually super straightforward um, that manual and the instruction guide that they gave you is super detailed that anyone can pretty much do it at home and like I said it was mine and Bailey's first time ever doing one and I don't know about you guys but I think it looks pretty bloody professional I would definitely recommend day one snorkels for anyone looking for a just a, basically a stainless snorkel doesn't matter if you're looking for seamed or seamless just go and check out day one they have a bunch of things on their website as you can see I've put a couple of stickers up on the car at the moment so you can also get them from their website if you please and their customer service was actually really well so I was speaking to Dominic there um, he was a legend he was super helpful with everything and on their uh, instructions they give you you know there's phone numbers emails pretty much everything you need that if you ever get in a pickle with it just give them a quick call and they'll walk you through the whole thing again I want to thank day one for sending me out this snorkel I'm so stoked with it and I think it looks amazing I definitely came to test this bad boy out and just drown it in a puddle and not hurt my motor pretty much. If you guys haven't already, go click that link down below. Go check out their website. Even if you just want to browse, go have a look, get some stickers, get some snorkels and have some fun. Anyway guys, I want to thank you for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed and I hope it gave you a bit of confidence to maybe try it yourself once you purchase your day one snorkel. Make sure you leave a like and comment if you've got any questions or anything for me. I'm happy to answer any questions and if I don't know it, I'll send it off to day one and I'll get back to you straight away. Well guys, it's about time we have a proper look at this thing. Let's cue the cinematic. See you guys.